Alright, so in this video we're going to discuss uh, multiplication of probabilities. In other words, the rule that if you have the probability of um, two events followed one after the other, you're just going to end up multiplying the probability of the events. So as a quick example, what is the possibility of rolling two heads um, in a row? So we can roll a Oh, we can throw a coin and we're gonna, it's going to give us heads or tails we can throw it again, it's going to give us heads or tails and the probability of having two heads in a row is a half multiplied by a half giving us a total probability of one quarter now it is somewhat counterintuitive that we have to multiply the probabilities yet there, um, there is mathematical sense to it so we're going to look at this and we're going to see mathematically why is it that we multiply two probabilities. And we start off first by looking at what is the definition of probability. So probability by definition is the number of um, outcomes under assessment, so we'll call this the assessed outcomes. So it can be heads if we're trying to flip a coin, or it can be the number of a die over the uh, po um, total of equally likely outcomes. So it's the assessed outcomes over total outcomes. So with a coin, if we, uh, if we want to see what is the chance of having uh, heads or tails, well, we're looking uh, specifically at heads. The assessed outcomes will be 1 for heads. Total outcomes will be heads or tails, so total outcomes is 2. When you throw a coin, it's going to be 1 out of 2. Just to illustrate it again, what is the probability of rolling a 6 when we roll a die? When we roll a die, we might have a 1, or a 2, or a 3, or a 4, or a 5, or a 6. So our total outcomes when we roll a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 6. The assessed outcomes we're looking at, we specifically want to see what is the chance of rolling a 6. There's only one 6. So assessed outcomes will be 1, total outcomes are 6, that's 1 out of 6. Now, this definition of probability does not change when we are looking at multiple probabilities. Uh, we're still looking at all the assessed outcomes and all the total outcomes. So we can actually um, rewrite it. Let's say we're looking at the probability of rolling two 6's in a row. So let's just write our definition here. So our probability, and we're looking at the probability of rolling um, two sixes in a row when we're rolling dice. So we still need to work out total outcomes, this time though of two rolls of the dice and we need the total, um, all the assessed outcomes of two rolls. So this is an illustration of our first roll. Let's draw our second roll here. And these are all the possibilities of our second roll. So let's ignore the assessed outcomes for now and let's just look at uh, total outcomes. What are the, all the possible roles that we could have if we're rolling the dice one after the other? If we roll a one first, we might roll a one and then a one. Or we might roll a one and a two. Or one and a three and so on and so forth for all six options. In other words, if we roll a 1, we have a whole 6 possible options after that. We can summarize that as saying 1 times 6. If we roll a 2, same story. We have 6 possible options, and 3, and so on, and so on. So for each one of these options, there are 6 possible um, options afterwards. So if we um, have 6 options followed, and by each of them having another 6 options, we can summarize that as saying um, that the total number of possible things that can occur, or combinations that can occur uh, with these two dice rolls is 6 times 6. And 
this principle of being able to just multiply um, the two rows together instead of having to actually manually count each one, one, uh, one after the other is referred to as the fundamental principle of counting. And indeed it's because of the fundamental principle of counting that we are allowed to take that shortcut and that will eventually lead us to this shortcut over here. So, we've got our um, two rows here um, and then we can say that actually the total outcomes of the two rows is actually the total the totals of the first row multiplied by the totals of the second row. Now, what are the ones that we are assessing? We are assessing whether we can roll two sixes in a row. So the assessed outcomes for the first row is just the six. Let's pretend all these other rolls don't exist when we're looking at our assessed outcomes. The outcomes we're assessing afterwards is only the next six and we're ignoring all the rest. So regarding assessed outcomes we only have one and instead of counting all these other ones we only have another one so we can say that that is actually one times one. It would be different if we were looking say what is the possibility of rolling a five or a six followed by a five or a six. If we were working that out, we would then have to um, calculate all the possibilities of the assessed outcomes in the same way that we worked out the uh, complete total of all the outcomes. We would say we can roll a 5 and a 5, or a 5 and a 6, so that would be 1 times 2. But we can also roll a 6 or a 5, or a 6 and a 6. So we'll have 2 here multiplied by 2 here, so it will end up being 2 times 2 for our total assessed um, outcomes that would be on the top here. However, we're not worried about that. We're only looking at six of, uh, the possibility of rolling two sixes in a row. So that's just going to be one times one. So we can say that um, we would just multiply the amount of assessed outcomes in the first row multiplied by the outcomes in the second row. Again, because of the fundamental principle of counting. So we can write here that it's all the assessed numbers of the first row multiplied by the assessed outcomes of the second row. And that will be actually 1 times 1 over 6 times 6, which is going to give us 1 over 36. But there's something interesting happening here. Let me just move the camera a little bit so we can see what's happening in the corner there. There we go. There's something interesting here happening here in the sense that all we're doing is collecting the assessed totals of each row and dividing it by the complete totals of each row. And remember, probability is in fact your assessed outcomes over total outcomes. We have assessed outcomes of the first row here and total outcomes of the first row here. We can actually bunch them together. And we have the assessed outcomes of the second row and the totals of the second row. And we can bunch them together over there. And this assessment of the first row, or the total of the first row, is 1 out of 6 and is in fact the probability of rolling a 6. And the probability of rolling the second row, if we ignore the first row, what is the chance of rolling a 6? Again, it's 1 out of 6 options. 1 out of 6. So we could have actually skipped all this counting and assessment of the two rows and instead just jumped quickly and just multiplied the probability of the first row by the second row. In other words, we can multiply the probability of this uh, first row, we can say that's A, so probability of A, multiplied by probability of the second row, which we can call probability B. And that is why when we have multiple probabilities, because of the fundamental principle of counting, we can skip all these um, um, 
uh, steps and just say, well, we can just multiply the probabilities together instead of having to fiddle around with this formula and work out the total outcomes of all uh, the roles or whatever other probabilities um, we are looking at. So I hope that explains why uh, we multiply probabilities and this is basically the proof of why we multiply probabilities.